This is the first video of our applications of derivatives called related rates. And um, this first video will give you a basics that you'll need, a basis for what you'll need to do these problems. And I'm not probably going to cover a lot in this first except to give you what is a related array and to give you some basics. Well, first of all, notice I've highlighted rates and related rates because rates are what we've been doing in, uh, for um, calculus one and they're all derivatives. So we're talking about, when we talk about rates, we're talking about slope, um, change, and that is related rates. Now, the related part that I have highlighted here is when we have relationships with other variables. So the problem for finding a rate of change from other known rates of change is called related rates. And these are the problems that we have. Now, what you've come in contact with in the past is you've known these formulas, we call them. But if you think of them this way, they're really relationships between other variables in that someone has figured out or that we've known for a long time, all right? So look at this first relationship. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which everybody knows is only useful in a right triangle, and we call this the Pythagorean Theorem. So the a and b are the sides, c is your hypotenuse, and this is the Pythagorean Theorem, okay? So you're like, well, what does this have to do with related rates? Well. Pythagoras found that if I squared both of those sides and added them, it's the same as a hypotenuse squared. So it's a relationship between the sides or the legs of a right triangle and the hypotenuse. Okay? So there is our first one. We have a right triangle here, and this is the Pythagorean theorem. So this, this is when you'll use this a lot. Okay? A equals pi r squared is the area of a circle. So this is circle area that we've looked at, and this is basically a relationship, in fact it's a direct proportion, that if I take any radius of a circle and square it, and I multiply it by pi, which is a constant, I'm going to get the area. So again, we will use this relationship between the radius and the area, so here's our radius, I should label these sides, and the hypotenuse, that we will use a equals pi r squared. So, so far we have this relationship we're very used to, we're very used to this one. The next one is c equals pi d, which is the circumference of a circle, or the distance around. And we, here we're using it with a diameter, and the diameter is straight across, so if they give us that information. Another way we've seen circumference is 2 pi r, so that is the, the direct relationship with a radius in the circumference. Then we have this formula here, which is the volume is pi r squared h, which has to do is the volume of a cylinder. So if we're talking about a cylinder, and we'll draw a little picture here. So here's our cylinder with a radius of r, and the height here, we can talk about the volume. Okay. And now we have the volume here of a cone and it's one-third pi r squared h. So I'll put this cone down. So here's our cone. And we can tell the direct relationship with the height and the radius. So here's our radius r and our height there. We know we take one-third of that. So a cone and a cylinder, the difference is the cone is one-third pi r squared h and the cylinder is pi r squared h. So look some other formulas and relationships we've done. S equals 4 pi r squared is the surface area of a sphere. Of a sphere. So a sphere is going to be a, this nice round ball, if you will. I'll try to make it look 3D for you. The radius r, that if we had 4 pi times that radius squared, we'd find the surface area. This is the volume of a sphere. So this one, again, you can use this relationship here of our sphere that we have here to find the volume of it. A equals base times height. We're talking area here of a parallelogram, a rectangle. So we'll say parallelogram because a, a parallelogram, a rectangle is a parallelogram. So let's draw this here. 
and here's the height here and the base here. Then we have one half base times height, so this is an area relationship or area formula of a triangle. So I'm not using a right triangle just to help label everything. So here's your height here and your base here. And if I take one half of those two multiplied, I'd find the area. And right here is the area of a trapezoid. So I basically wanted to make sure that you had these relationships in your notes so that you could refer to them. Lots of times I give them to you, but I, I just want you to see that you can find various related rates with all these. So here's my height. Here's base 1. Here's base 2. And take one half of that when I multiply that and these two added, then we're good with there. So there's our basic formulas. Now let me talk a little bit about related rates and derivatives. So I picked the volume of a cylinder here for us to look at because I have a couple variables in here. First, this is the volume right here. This is our radius and this is our height, which I know that everybody knows that. But we can take derivatives with different constants. So let's look at this first one. We're going to use the same formula for all of these, but I'm going to use our constant here, h constant. Okay? So if you remember our implicit functions um, chapter, this is what we did. So I have volume equals pi r squared h. Now if I tell you r is a constant, so right there that's a constant. It's the same as pi. These are like just regular numbers in front of the h. And I want you to find dv dt um, when the r is constant. So that means h is a variable. Okay? And I want you to notice one thing here. So if this is h is our variable, this is what we're going to use to do the derivative. So if I do dv, the derivative of the volume, since these are constants, there's a power of 1. I'm going to do 1 times pi r squared, which is going to be pi r squared. And then I'm going to take the, and since I use a power rule, it goes to 0. And then I'm going to say dh, because I took the derivative 1 times this. This goes to 0, so essentially it turns to 1, and then I do dh. Now they want me to find dv dt, so instead of going through and dividing by dx's like I taught you in the implicit functions, we're going to go through and divide by dt. So now I just came up with a related rate that the derivative of the volume with respect to time is pi r squared when the the um, hypotenuse, excuse me, not the hypotenuse, but the height is changing. So if the height is changing here, I can find how the volume is changing if I don't touch my radius. All right. So that means you're looking at, here is cylinder with this height h, and I'm looking at this cylinder. Notice I kept the radius the same with this height h. I can say, well, how does my volume change if I'm just making it shorter and taller, changing my height, keeping my radius the same? Okay. Now, the other way we can look at this cylinder we have is if h is stays the same, if your height stays the same, then we're going to see how your volume changes when your radius changes. So I still have the same formula. Volume is pi r squared h, but in this case, h is constant. So what I would suggest is that you put all the constants together. So I'm going to move the h right up next to the pi, and I'm going to put my variable at the end. That's the trick, is have the variable at the end. Then I can look at it and say, okay, if I have to take the derivative, I can do the power rule with that tool. So if that 2, excuse me. So I'm going to do dv equals 2 pi times h to the first power. So I have an r there. Okay, and then I took the derivative of the r with respect to t. Okay, and I put the t here. So in this case, I'm saying, all right, how is my volume changing if I keep changing my radius? So I can have a cylinder like this with this radius r. Okay, or I can do this, leaving the height the same, but if I change my radius, how does that affect my volume, the change in my volume? So that's what I'm talking about, by just changing one variable and leaving one the same. Now it says, what is the, the, how does the volume change with respect to time if neither r nor h is constant? So if you looked at it, I have volume is pi r squared h. And we've been doing derivatives this whole time, but if this is a, a variable and this is a variable, then I've got to do the, power, the product rule, because I can say that's my f and that's my g. And I'm saying, okay, if f is pi r squared and g is this, I have f is pi r squared. f prime is going to be 2 pi r. 
dr, okay? And then g is going to be h, so g prime is going to be 1 dh. So if I want to find what dv is, okay, it's going to be f prime g, so it's 2 pi, I'm going to just put the h in front of the r, 2 pi hr dr plus f g prime pi r squared dh, and then I just go through instead of dx's, I'm going to divide through by dt. Now I have a formula here that has both of them changing. So I'm saying, okay, what if I change my height and my radius? How will that change my um, volume? And the one thing I want you to notice is right here, I'm going to use a different color so you can see this. I'm going to use um, this yellow. See how this is what dv dt was? And that is right here. See that? And then here's d dv dt if I left the radius, let the radius change, but the height was constant. And see how that's right here. So adding these two together, because you're changing them, will give us how we would find how the volume would change. Okay? So let's do a few uh, related rate problem solving strategies on the next video, but that's it for this one right now.